One of the things that I know affecting whole heap of people in Jamaica is the high electricity bill. When the PMP come into power, them say them going to bring down electricity costs. What has happened since? Electricity costs keep rising. They promise that by 2016, they would have made the JPS more efficient with more efficient plants. That not going to happen till another two years. And before you know it, it will be another three or four years before them actually do it. The Labour Party will make sure that we put in place more efficient electricity generated plants to bring down the cost of electricity to you. I don't like to make promise. I make commitment. And under the Labour Party government, we are going to ensure that we bring to this country the big power plants. We are going to ensure that we bring to this country the big energy companies that can put the money in here to build the plants to give you cheaper and better electricity. So inside this video, I am going to expose some lies and I am going to also give you some throwback video inside this video. So this one is going to be excited. You're definitely going to want to see this video. You definitely don't want to miss none of it. But bless up to my viewers and my subscribers. Them. I hope everybody having a blessed and a wonderful evening. Now my viewers and my subscribers, remember, in everything you do, always put God first. In every and uh, any situation, just always remember to call upon God. Always remember to pray because a prayer day keep the devil away now my viewers and my subscribers inside this video i am going to expose some lies that on a leader um i've told you guys over the years and it still have not been fulfilled and not just that i am going to expose some lies but i am going to expose the biggest lie that this man ever tell in him lifetime when he increase him own salary we soon come So welcome back to my viewers and my subscribers. Them. Big up to all of my viewers. Big up to all of my subscribers. Them. We continually support the channel and help the channel to grow. Now my people, remember to leave a like on this video. Remember to give this video a thumbs up. Also, if you are a new viewers first time on my channel, then please subscribe to my channel and turn on the post notification bell. So whenever we drop new content, you will be first to be notified. Alright? Now, my people, the first thing that we're going to look at inside this video, people, is the way our, our Prime Minister and Jonas are so interested in solving Haiti problem, but are not interested when it comes on to the Jamaican problem. And the biggest problem that Jamaican is facing right now is crime and violence. And the Prime Minister, the Security Minister, the Minister and all of them, now and try to solve the problem that is going on inside Jamaica right now. Gunman chipping for close down school in a Westmoreland. But yet still, we don't hear nobody talk about it. All kind of killing and robbery and all of them something that they happen inside of Jamaica. Yeah? And nobody now pay attention to it. But everybody ready to go fight yet the war for them. Everybody interested to go take up yet the buckle. And the only reason why them interested... If you take up eighty back up on him head, and because the United States has sent how much million dollar fee for go fight eighty war or for go sponsor eighty or whatever they might send the money for do. But the biggest problem is Andrew one is a sister people take with you that Mickey and guarantee you say the United States eighty all of them they look upon him and they say watch it what watch it watch it. Him can't even clean up in yard, but he want to clean up few place. Him can't even clean up in yard, but he want to clean up other people place. People, check out this video. So this is a cartoon by Clovis for the Jamaica Observer today. This cartoon depicts your Prime Minister Andrew Holness 
in a high level meeting with CARICOM leaders and other regional meet leaders, including the Americans, the Mexicans, all French people they here. And they are here to discuss the Haitian crisis. What is ironic about this situation is that while these foreign dignitaries are here to discuss the crisis in Haiti, we're having a crisis right here in Jamaica. And so this is what this cartoon is really illustrating. It's showing our newspaper with the US security reading it, seeing that West Milan, in West Milan schools are closed because children are terrified. Parents are terrified to send their kids to school because gangsters have threatened to invade schools in West Milan, in Jamaica, right here. While our pr prime minister pontificates and acts like he's such a security expert. And while that is happening in West Milan, in St. Catherine, Central Village to be exact, houses are being firebombed, families are being wiped out. While the prime minister is hosting foreign dignitaries and acting as though he's this great guru on crime control and management. That is the irony of the situation here. So who is going to tell Andrew Holness that really and truly he's a laughing stock? Who? Because if this weren't so serious, it would actually be hilarious, downright hilarious. Imagine your own country. You're grappling with crime. You cannot manage crime. The country has areas that are in total anarchy. And yet here you are as the leader trying to solve anarchy in another country. So you're trying to out other people fire when your, your yard on fire. Make this make sense, Jamaicans. Make this make sense. I thank you. Have yourself a great day. Sometimes it even left me for wonder if the government of Jamaica care about the people them we have lost them life in a Jamaica. I wonder if the government even care about the children them that have been missing and cannot be found. Women and children we are losing life. Innocent people. The other day I see them firebomb. An elderly man or oh, 70 year old. And he have a burning of that. But yet still. The government now nah, look on them thing there. Him no business about Jamaica. It's like him put Jamaica on the back burner. And say, all right then. We, we more cater about other people country. But people. If you can't dance a yard. There is no way you can dance abroad. Now. One of the biggest lies. Andrew Wallace ever tell. When me, me look on it every day. I me want to say. If this man can really look on the people of Jamaica. And tell this lie. What else him wouldn't do? Oh, remember when Andrew Wallace raised up them pay and him take three hundred percent pay raise. Oh, no, remember when Andrew come up back and say a lie. Him not take no raise, and him have a mind. He have a great mind. Give it back to. If you not take a pay raise, oh, you are gonna give it back. If you don't take a pay raise, oh, you are gonna give it back. No, me I go play the video. And you guys can watch it and leave your honest opinion down below in the comment section. Me just try to show you how the leader of our country lie. And you see when you lie, you're most thief. I hear a man talk all kind of lie. About 20 million and 28 million. Lie! Me not take no salary increase. So my salary is what it was before. And I tell you something, I feel like just get back to. Because he's a proud man, you know. Me not like people tell life for me. Oh. Now, people, I don't want a man liar than Andrew Wallace. Can you find someone else that is much liar than Andrew Wallace? The man lie, man lie. All when the man talk things, the man only hear what he say. And he out there in the public. The man still a say a lie. Now the man announced his own salary increase. 
And then when Jamaicans start talking about it, say, how oh, can you take 300% pay increase and give um, a nurse and teacher and police 20% pay increase? The man say, a lie. Him never take no pay increase. So just this is just to show you, say, the leader that is leading us are so lion corrupted. And if someone can be so lion corrupted, how can you trust that person? How can we let that person lead us when he's a lie? He don't even know how to talk truth. All when I some little, little, least little thing, when he can just admit the truth and say, all right, then, so and so explain himself. The man has to tell lie about it. Him has to always tell lie. Mr. PM, you have to change your dirty ways. You have to stop lying to the people that you serve. The people that put you into power. Stop lying to them. All them are going to trust you when you get up every day of your life and keep lying to them. It really bad. But people stay to talk down below in the comment section. And as usual, people, remember to leave a like on this video. Now, on a know me, I always give you some flashback. Now, I am going to give you a flashback inside of this video. I am going to play this video for you guys. So, you need to take a seat, listen to this one very carefully, and like this video, and subscribe, and share it as well. Dear Jamaicans, so we're continuing with my series, a quick review of Jamaican politics. And today we're going to talk about this man. This man is Don Crawford. You want to know what's the importance or significance of Don Crawford? Well, Don Crawford plays a significant role in FinSAC. He's really the genesis of FinSAC. And I'm not, as you know, with this series, I try not to give you from my perspective. I try to give you from the pers an independent perspective. Because I don't want to no come here and say, me, this is my opinion. Because me is a comrade. So today, I'll be reading from Wikileaks. Most of you would know what Wikileaks are, right? Want to know about the Swedish man? Well, leak is something them. Well, this Wikileaks is from the U.S. Embassy of Jamaica. Don Crawford, former head of the failed Century National Bank, has lost his appeal to the Privy Council following a 1999 conviction in civil court for financial fraud and has been instructed to pay about U.S. $45 million to the government of Jamaica. Although the Director of Public Prosecutions has made a ruling on whether criminal charges will be filed, that ruling has not yet been made public. Crawford, who resides in the U.S., was once the darling of the Jamaican banking sector. He was often lauded by the government of Jamaica officials. <coughs> Apologies. He was often lauded by the government of Jamaica officials for his foray into non-banking areas at a time when investors were shunning the productive sector to benefit from the high interest rate regime. However, Crawford's bank, which made a number of loans to connected parties, was soon to face a liquidity and solvency crisis and had to seek assistance from the state. Recognizing the extent of the deficit, the authorities took control of the bank and ev eventually charged Crawford for financial fraud. It is widely believed that his close affiliation with the opposition Jamaica Labour Party did not help his cause as no other banker has been charged. Crawford's lawyers are in the process of discussing payment, which if made would provide a much needed windfall for the cash strapped geo government of Jamaica. The UK based Privy Council on October 10 ruled that Don Crawford 
and former top executives of the failed Central National Bank must pay the government of Jamaica an estimated 45 million US dollars in principal and interest for unsecured loans made ahead of the bank's collapse in 1996. The Privy Council is expected to announce the final amount payable to the state when it hands down its written judgment later this month. The Council's ruling arose from the appeal of a March 1999 decision by Jamaica's Chief Justice Lensley Wolf, in which he berated the actions of Crawford and another top executive, Capel Williams, who he described as rogue bankers. They were busy helping themselves to the bank's funds, Wolf said in his judgment at the time. These payments constitute a misapplication of the bank's funds. However, Crawford, who reportedly resides in Atlanta, was once regarded as a model banker and government of Jamaica functionaries viewed his bank as a blueprint. Crawford was often lauded by government of Jamaica officials for venturing into non-banking areas such as real estate at a time when investors were shunning productive investments to benefit from the high interest rate policy. Ironically, it was Crawford's foray into non-core activities which was partially responsible for the bank's demise as a number of unsecured loans were made to connected parties to finance these investments. In particular, the bank made loans to companies owned by Crawford, his mother, and former opposition leader and prime minister, Edward Siaga. One such loan, may I turn the paper? One such loan made to an affiliated company to construct the over 700 room Renaissance Hotel. The unsecured loans to connected parties took a toll on the liquidity and solvency of the bank, which they could not be financed. This prompted the institution to approach the government of Jamaica for assistance. Hear that? they approached the government of Jamaica for assistance. In 1996, when funds were not available to pay depositors. However, recognizing the magnitude of the deficit, the government of Jamaica was forced to take control of the bank. The Director of Public P Prosecutions, DPP, who was called in to probe the activities of the bank, ruled that Crawford, his mother, and top executives were to be charged for financial fraud. It is widely held that his close affiliation to the GLP made his cause worse, as to date no other banker had been charged despite the failure of other institutions. However, the Privy Council ruling could well provide a precedent for the other financial players to be charged. Head of the Financial Fraud Unit in the Office of the Director of Public of the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, Carolyn Hay, was hesitant to comment on whether there were other cases pending against former bankers. She suggested that the embassy officials write to DPP Kent Pantry for a response. Lawyers representing Crawford do not expect any criminal charges to be brought against their client. Although he was investigated by the fraud squad following the collapse of the bank, the banker said the next step is for both sides to meet and discuss the final figures to be paid by Crawford. If the debt is repaid, it would provide a welcome windfall for the coffers of the government of Jamaica, particularly given the continued underperformance in revenues, a point captured by a cartoonist at the Gleaner newspaper. 
The cartoon showed an expectant finance minister, Dr. Omar Davis, inquiring of a distraught Crawford when he would be sending the money. At the same time, informing him that he could send it through a leading remittance company. Chief financial economist at the Ministry of Finance, Courtney Williams, told embassy officials that if the money is repaid, then it would be more than welcome, but he is of the opinion that the government of Jamaica might only receive a portion of the judgment amount. Williams told embassy officials that he was aware of a case against Paul Cheng Young of the former Eagle Financial Group who also resides in the United States and has written a book about the crisis. When asked if there were any political underpinnings in this case, William said, not that I'm aware of, but nothing can be ruled out. And that's where the WikiLeaks document ended. And as you know, Julian Assange, who was the founder of WikiLeaks, leaked a lot of documents from all over the world. But this is the person where FinSAC started, Century National Bank. I have more information on Don Crawford. So this is just part one of Don, Don Crawford's saga. Come back for part two tomorrow. Take care on yourself.